there are enough parts in place now to give you the general layout of the car. The vehicle is very small, aiming at a weight of 400 kilograms and able to fit on an 8x5 garden trailer. It takes its inspiration from the Hayabusa powered and four wheel drive Palatov D4. Its main feature is that the motorcycle engine, the Suzuki RF900 engine, sits in tandem alongside the driver. This is a straightforward way to put a motorcycle engine into a car. The engine then drives back by its conventional motorcycle chain to a sprocket diff at the rear. The sprocket diff is the subject of another video on this channel. The Suzuki back brakes, which are 240mm in diameter, are mounted inboard and the Suzuki front calipers are used on the back brakes. Another feature is that the vehicle only uses 10 inch wheels. Uh, these are wheels from a classic Mini and the wheels fitted happen to be uh, Minotaurs. The point of 10 inch wheels, and they'll be fitted with 165 Yokohama tyres, is that it reduces unsprung weight dramatically and rotational mass uh, dramatically as well. This is a small light vehicle and needs all the help it can to accelerate. The bearing carriers are the subject of another video. They were carved from Volkswagen Combi bearing carriers. An alloy upright will be fitted to the carrier that has yet to be fabricated. The rear suspension are struts and then there will be inverse wishbones running towards the diff and radius arm running towards what is the seat in this picture. The strut is just propped so that you can get a general idea of the layout. This is a similar suspension to the Lancia Stratos and given the very limited travel of the suspension should be perfectly adequate. The advantage of struts is packaging and a lighter chassis because the load points are spread further apart while still having reasonable camber control. The strut is in fact a BC racing strut intended for a Hyundai Veloster which I managed to get on sale. The reverse mechanism will be driven by a starter motor. This is a Honda Civic starter motor which is geared down and I shall drive that through a worm and onto the, onto the engine sprocket. Uh, that will give a very good reduction to the back wheels. There's a lot more thinking and design work that needs to occur at the front of the vehicle. I hope to use a torsion bar suspension and bell crank and pull rod on the front. This looks complicated and it is. However, it has the advantage of giving me more packaging options and the ability to have a lower nose on the car. The torsion springs of all things come from a Volkswagen Beetle. Yes, you heard that right. The steering rack is from a Honda Civic. It is a center steering rack and I've chosen that A because I had it uh, and B because it gives me most flexibility for positioning of steering arms and front suspension. The steering rack is a chunky old hunk of alloy and I may see if I can make it a stressed member at the front of the vehicle. So that's where we are at this stage. If you do wonder why there's, there's such a collection of unusual components, then don't forget this vehicle is being built down to a budget or as best as I can within a budget using many old car parts that I had at hand from a previous build. There's obviously a lot of juggling to do to get the various components and the seating position right so that it's a comfortable and effective ride. I think though that we're some month off the voila moment.